Even men at the top of their game find themselves wanting more from life. Whether it's more meaning, unshakable confidence, a bigger impact, more money, deeper love, a hotter sex life, or a powerful legacy. Find out how good your life can be on this episode of Man Alive. Also, as I've supported men in their love and work lives for 15 years now, many men ask for the right words to say to be more successful, attractive, and desirable. But I found it's not so simple as giving scripts or lines because every man is different. So giving words or scripts would be like giving a tall, thin man a shorter, wider man's pants or vice versa. The words have to make sense for you and your personality, and there's so much happening beneath the surface that people are responding to. If you're interested in how to become a better lover and leader in your own unique way, go to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz, or you can text ALIVE to 44144. It only takes a couple minutes and you'll start to get an idea of how you can be both more respected and desired. After you fill it out, we can schedule a time to review your quiz and talk about your specific challenges and desires. So again, go to either shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text ALIVE to 44144. That's A-L-I-V-E to 44144. Enjoy this episode of Man Alive. Hello and welcome to this episode of Man Alive. I am excited to be here today to talk about rebuilding trust. So one of the things that we know for sure about relationships is that conflict happens, disagreements happen, sometimes even betrayal happens. And it's not about necessarily avoiding any of those things, but how do we repair and how do we rebuild especially trust when it's been broken. And I have an amazing woman here with us today, Ashlyn Mitchell. Ashlyn, welcome. Hi, thank you. Happy to be here. And yeah, Ashlyn has been through the experience of being betrayed and the the healing that has come of this in her own relationship has caused her to start a podcast with her husband and another therapist called The Betrayed, The Addicted, and The Expert. And she coaches women to help them find hope again that an amazing relationship is possible even after betrayal. And I wanted to have this conversation with Ashlyn so that you can understand more about a woman's mind and heart and body and what it takes to rebuild trust when something has broken it. And, you know, As I think about that, trust can be broken in so many different ways. Sometimes it's betrayal. Sometimes it's something that you would say, well, I didn't even do anything or I didn't know I did something, right? So there's a whole range that can happen in there. And I think what I really just want you to listen for here is no matter what it is or how big it seems to you, how to actually connect and, um, you know, rebuild trust from a woman's perspective. So thank you, Ashlyn, for coming to have this conversation. You bet. And honestly, I'm glad you're you're providing this for your audience because this is part of the discovery of my own journey and path was understanding the mind of my husband. Mm -hmm. So thank Mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for wanting to understand the mind of your husband, right? I think for for (laughs) people in couples to actually really want to understand each other. I think that's the only way we survive. Yes, I agree. So can you tell us a little bit about what started this journey for you? Yes. So um, Kobe and I, uh, my husband, we have been married 20 years. And uh, from the first week we were married, I knew that there was something going on. There was, you know, secrets being kept. And I never said anything. It was just an immediate disconnect. Uh, I chose to, you know, I'm more of an avoidant attachment or, Mm -hmm. you know, I'll I'll just go and be inside my head and make mountains out of molehills instead of saying, hey, what's going on? This feels weird. Yeah. So, so, and we were young. We got married young. And so this went on for years. And when I finally, after about four years, realized, okay, it was pornography. So it started with that. Um, after six years, it was uh, a, an emotional affair, which mm-hmm. at the time didn't make a lot of sense to me. It felt hurtful, mm-hmm. uh, but it was also like, but he didn't do that. And so uh-huh. I had a lot of um, people, you know, ahead of me saying, you know, it's not that big a deal. 
he didn't do anything, you know, except sexual. <laughs> yes. He didn't mm -hmm. touch her. It was very connecting in, in emotional ways, which still was really hurtful. Yeah. Um, but I just gulped it down because people said it wasn't a big deal. And about 12 years into the marriage, um, it happened again, but a little bit more <laughs> and a little bit more. Right. And he kept that a secret as well. So it was just this continued, like we were happy and we were starting, you know, we had our lives, but we were also this elephant of the room of, we just don't talk about the things that have really hurt me and hurt our relationship and are causing this disconnect. Yeah. Um, so about 14 years into our marriage, we saw a commercial for a uh, specialized therapist uh, group who was helping people with sexual addiction. Mm -hmm. And so the more we started looking into it, the more we started to learn about betrayal and the trauma that it can really bring um, to either side, male or female, it started to make a lot of sense. And so we opted to just jump right in and say, wow. we're going to do this. And uh, it was a huge financial commitment. It was scary. Um, it went from, we're not talking about it and really no one knew about it. I didn't mm -hmm. talk to friends. I didn't talk to family. It was embarrassing. Um, I wanted to protect him, but I also hated what yep. he'd done. It was very confusing. And so when we jumped into this, I hated it. He didn't mm -hmm. like it either. It's, mm -hmm. you know, we started in groups and going to therapy and it's like, ah, I don't, you're not my people. You, yeah. I don't want to share my stuff with you. Yeah. Um, and it took about six weeks for me to really jump, jump fully in and say, okay, I'm here and I'm doing this for me and I'm doing it no matter if we stay together or if right. we don't. Yeah. I just wanted to feel different and to, to get better. So um, as we started to do that and go down that journey, it very much was like the, we worked on the me before the we. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't do a lot of couples work for probably two years. Um, and then you we, each were doing, you each were doing that separately. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, you know, indiv individualized therapy as well as group yep. and, and, and other growth mindset type things, skills for communication and stuff. So mm -hmm. As we got to that place where we thought we never could be, you know, we passed hope and now we're living in what we thought could never be. My husband, Kobe said, I want, I want to share this, that it's possible to make change because I really believed I couldn't, that once I'd crossed the line, I could There was go no back. going back. Yeah. 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 And for me, I was already uh, public with a business on social media and I wasn't ready to share our stuff. Uh -huh. and <laughs> so he kind of you know, talked about what it would look like. And it's really just to help people. And we just want to help them find hope because we were so private and so isolated that we didn't, we didn't know all that there was uh, out there for mm -hmm. resources, both free and stuff you invest in. And so he convinced me and we shared our stories that went viral, unfortunately. No. Um, <laughs> Fortunately they, or unfortunately. Yes. And it really, it changed our lives the day they came out. And I'm not kidding. Like people showed up at our doorstep that had known us for 20 years and were shocked. Wow. Um, it just, it blew our families away. You know, we told them right before the videos came out, but they yeah. had no idea, you know? Yeah. Kobe, my husband is very likable and very easy to get along with. He's everyone's friend. He's successful. And so how could he do wrong? <laughs> and, right. um, Which so, is a great reminder, you know, to anyone listening, right? It's like, oh, you're not a bad person if any of this mm -hmm. has happened. You're also not a bad person if this has happened to you. And, right. you know, being human is really complicated and not easy and relationship is not easy. So... Yeah. Oh my gosh. Amen to all that. And you know, I was the girl who said if my husband ever cheated on me, I'd be gone. Yeah. And when it came down to it, it's not so black and white. No. And I ate my words. And yeah. you know, as we started to rebuild trust, I saw there's way more good in you than bad. And yeah. I'm 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 in this. I'm willing to to do this together. And that's what we've done. So we started our podcast. Um, three years ago with not our therapist, but a therapist. Different therapist. And, and yeah. well, here's, here's a question. What had you be willing to go from, you know, if that ever happened, I would leave to, I'm actually going to try to make this work. Oh yeah. 
Uh, that's a tricky question, I think, because in the, you know, in the very beginnings when we started recovery work of, okay, we're going to, we're going to try to figure this out. It was very, it, I make it sound like we were running a race together, but we weren't. Mm. <laughs> it, it was, we're side by side, you know, maybe we're on the freeway together, yeah. but we're, in, we were Separate in our cars. Own, Yes. Mm -hmm. We're in our own lanes. And every time I would try to jump over to his lane or he would jump over to mine, it didn't go well. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, um, it was very much our own paths. And so I didn't know, you know, we we've had two separations and mm -hmm. we didn't know what the outcome would be until, okay. until we, and you know, it was probably a year into our, you know, daily work and recovery where I said, I, I'm realizing now I trust you and I'm wow totally shocked that I haven't noticed it before, but it was just this, you know, day after day, I hadn't been mindful enough to realize I, I am okay where that I'm the at. trust was rebuilding. Yes. And it was just so scary to think that it could because huh. I've been hurt so bad. Okay. So can you help men understand like what was scary about the fact that trust could be rebuilt? Oh, uh, I would say there's a little bit of shame that goes into it. Mm, um, yeah. The idea, like I said, I would, I would leave my spouse and most people say that, or you have conversations, you know, did you hear that so-and-so got divorced and he cheated or she did this? And I knew that that was happening. <laughs> and, yeah. and for me to, well, and yes, for us to be public is like a whole nother realm of this, but yeah, it it was scary to even take the steps towards hope uh -huh, of uh -huh. that it could happen because I could be hurt again. Right. Which, you know, like you said, we're human. We're going to be hurt again. Yep. And so it kind of was this crazy acceptance and letting yeah. go of, you know what? And that's, if it does, then I now have more tools. I have, yes. I have boundaries and I know what I will do. And, he's right. and, and clearly you have to make that decision for yourself. And I'm curious, you know, were there things that Kobe said or did that made it safer for you or that had you be like, okay, even though this is scary, I'm going to try to trust again. Yes. Okay. So I would say the first thing was we really, so we went to just a family therapist for yeah. probably 18 months, you mm -hmm. know, cause insurance covered it and she was good enough, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we weren't fully honest. And so when we started going to, you know, a therapist who was specialized in somewhat, you know, they understood betrayal trauma, they understood addiction, um, affairs, all those types of things. It, I trusted them. I really said, okay, you do this every day. We don't. And uh -huh. so when they started to give us a plan of, Hey, you know, rebuilding trust looks like this and it, and it sounds dumb, but it's little daily efforts mm, and like so what? consistent behaviors of showing up. So the be like for Kobe and I, we were not habitual in the way we lived. We wanted to be, but we <laughs> weren't. And so little things, we call them dailies mm -hmm. of, okay, I'm going to move my body and be intentional for 30 minutes. Okay. So we, we started exercising the one thing we all want, right? Um, together started, or separately, this is just more like an individual practice or so couple. we, we do it together, but we are, we do it separate all the time too. Yep. Um, we did actually start <laughs> when we were separated working out together. So nice. it was, it was weird and crazy, but it was also, also good. Uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. We were moving that energy out. Okay. Yeah. Um, Another daily we do is a spiritual devotional of whatever that is. So it can be just meditation. It can be going on a hike, connecting to nature, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we do self-care. Self-care is became something that neither of us <laughs> were doing. We weren't mm -hmm. taking care of ourselves. Um, little things, basics of, and this might sound crazy to your audience, but when you don't love yourself or you're feeling a lot of disconnect, sometimes it's a little like, I don't get ready. So choosing to show up, take a shower every day, get ready, get dressed, even though I, I'm not leaving the house. Uh -huh. Um, stuff like that, you know, getting a haircut regularly for Kobe became a thing so that he was taking care of, you know, this is how I'm presenting to the world. And I want to show that I'm taking care of myself. Um, Something right. Like and it's, it's like how you're presenting to the world and also for each other. Yeah. 
there's a sense of like, oh, I'm not just in my sweatpants, kind of taking you for granted. And, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then we also started journaling and journaling has been this magical tool for me mm. to really find that self-reflection and, you know, what's my part in, in however I showed up today and, and really trying to make changes and have that growth mindset has been through journaling and, you know, sitting down, what did I feel today when I had this interaction with, you know, someone at work or with my child at home or my spouse? Um, and then talking about those things with myself, um, with journal prompts and things so that I don't go and show up in a, all my emotion with my spouse. Uh. So um, little things like that just consistently over time. That's really where it began was just seeing him. And it sounds kind of like, well, he's just checking boxes, but the energy is different from when you choose to show up for yourself and when you're choosing to show up for someone else. So you're- That's you're so interesting. Wait, okay. So now you're saying that because some of these practices are actually definitely showing up for yourself. Yes. But are you saying that then in showing up for yourself, then somehow he also started showing up for you? Uh, yes, that it did lead to that. Um, in the beginning, Kobe, he, he, he used these dailies as like a, if I do these things, then she'll think I'm good. Mm. Okay. So that's like the check the boxes. Mm -hmm. And that energy is, oh, it's like, it feels needy. It feels, yeah. um, it's like wanting the, um, approval yeah. from the yeah. outside. Yes. And so it's not attractive. It's mm -hmm. not connecting. And it's almost like, well, it just puts me in a place of, I don't feel safe. Uh huh. And so the shift that I saw in Kobe was, yeah, he did start with that. You know, he's, he's, it's new to him to start to work on himself mm -hmm. and to figure out who he really is and what is integrity and these things. And as I started to see that shift, it was him showing up, even if I'm out of town him showing up, uh -huh. even if I'm sick, he's like, I'm taking care of me and I'm on this path to rebuild our relationship with or without you. Hmm. And it, and it's not a like F you with or without you. It's like, I'm here I will, and I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm showing up. I'm showing up no matter what. Yes. So I, I can imagine that starting to build trust and were, were there times as this was going on where you, you know, were emotional or where you were like, I can't believe this happened and, you know, expressive in a way that he would have to kind of be like, Ooh, okay. You know, let me, <laughs> let me breathe. And how do I handle this? Like, did oh, those yeah. kind of moments happen? Yes. It's like, you know, all the, all the things that happen. Um, Part of him learning to be, and we both had to be, but patient and empathetic mm -hmm. to my pain absolutely had to happen yeah. because what happened, well, one, I didn't know how to communicate. So when I would try to express my pain and my grief over what had happened and, you know, what I thought was our life and turns out it's not, yep. he would become defensive or he would try to fix it or yep. he would go to victim mode. Mm -hmm. um, you know, blame shift. And that never went well. And so we would do that little cycle and dance. And um, I still remember the first time I saw him show up and really sit in it with me. Mm. And um, I felt I had a trigger. So uh, a, like a traumatic uh, response in my yep. body yep. and in my mind uh, while we were in the shower and it, totally unrelated, <laughs> but we're in the shower, um, have this trigger and instead of going and staying in my head like my old me would do, I told him, mm -hmm. this has nothing to do with you, but I'm feeling scared. Yep. I feel tr triggered. And, you know, I shared with him a little bit of it. And instead of him totally backing away and, uh, you know, you're right, never going to get over this. To, or, right, you're never going to get over this. Yep. Mm -hmm. He just listened. Mm -hmm. and, he, and just the simple act of saying nothing. <laughs> yeah was a start. Yep. And then he, you know, say more, he really cared about what I was feeling. Um, so he said to you, say more, like, tell me more. I actually want to understand this. Yes. Uh huh. And for me to show up with actual feelings instead of pointing fingers, uh -huh. he knew it. Uh, he knew a lot of the stuff of my pain and grief was his actions. Yes. And, 
until I feel like I felt heard, I kept bringing it up. Um, right. Well, that we do that, right? Until that's that's one of the reasons why people nag and we say the same things over and over again because until we feel heard, it's like we're trying to get in there. Yes. Yes. So um, Kobe describes it um, because it is this really confusing. How am I supposed to sit in your pain? It's so uncomfortable. Yes. Get over it. Um, right. If, if, I would be a lot more comfortable if you would get over it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So he, I had um, a back fusion about three years ago and mm. he said that really helped him kind of get an idea of how he could explain it to other guys who had been in his situation he explains it better than me, but I'm going to try. So <laughs> Great. I'm in the hospital and just had, you know, back surgery and I can't do much. Yeah. Right. And he's there by my side. He can't do much. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he says, Hey, I'm going to stay the night. I'm going to be here for you. And I'm, Oh no, you know, just leave and you can't do anything and just go home. Mm -hmm. And he stays and he says, yeah. I want to be here for you. Yep. And he chose to stay and he said it was uncomfortable. Yep. Um, he, he wanted to help me. He wanted to take away my pain, uh, make it better, all the things. And he couldn't, he just sat there. And he, for him, that made so much sense of what it feels like when he has to hear my pain. Yes. And it, it is a skill to be able to sit in pain, especially when you've caused it. Yes. Right. I mean, to sit with somebody else's pain on its own when you haven't caused it is, can be intense and is a skill to build. And then when you know that you have caused that pain on top of that, right, that's mm -hmm. like a double, a double whammy. Yes, for sure. So the listening, him being willing to, well, A, first not defend, then hear what you had to say then get even more curious about what you had to say. It sounds like that actually started to build a lot more trust. Yes. I love that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Are there any other examples of moments like that where you remember? Because, you know, that's so clear. Oh, my God. I remember the first time he listened. Are there other yeah. moments? Like, I remember the first time he, something that made a huge difference. Um, yeah. So this one you may or may not be good at if you're listening, but um, connecting to household needs. And it sounds really simple, but especially for me, I, at the time I wasn't working outside of the home. And so I was, you know, the full-time mom and taking care of the kids. Mm -hmm. And Kobe was working outside of the home and he would come home, you know, see the kids two and 24 hours and he didn't help a ton. Yeah. And, you know, he was out, he was working and, and that made sense. But when he really started to step into, hey, I'm here and I want to be a partnership. Mm -hmm. I want to parent together. I want to, you know, really understand. So we're on the same page. Yep. And that made a huge difference. So, I mean, it sounds silly, but we took out a notebook, a, yeah. you know, a yellow pad, and we did what we call a brain dump. And we wrote down, everything that needed to be done in our home. Mm -hmm. So giving the kids a bath, uh, putting the kids to bed, doing the laundry, putting it, the laundry away, you know, because yeah. I'm willing to do one and I hate doing the other. Uh -huh. um, we made this giant list. And then what we did is he took a highlighter that was, you know, his color. I took one that was my color. And I, we went through and I said, these are the things that are easy for me to do. Mm -hmm. And I will do them without resentment no problem. <laughs> yep. okay and he did his okay so we started to divide and then guess what we had all these things left over of wait neither of us want to do these things and they still have to be done oh, this is brilliant and so we went through again and said okay i'm willing to do these without resentment if we you know we can give a little so mm -hmm. it's more of the shared responsibility so dishes laundry those turned into either of us do them. We just do it. If it needs to be done, one of us is doing it and we're not feeling resentment. Yes. Um, it's things like that. When he really stepped into that, instead of saying, I shouldn't have to, I'm This working. is not my domain. This is your yes. domain. Yeah. It, it was like he became, because he, 
I wouldn't say he was selfish, but he was selfish, right? Because yeah. the, the way he'd shown up for me in our marriage was selfish. Yeah. And so when he started to see me and to see my children, that's when I started to see like, okay, he's here with us. You know, he's not sitting right. on, the, on his phone on the, on the couch when he gets home fr from work. He's saying, hey, I'm here. Let's make dinner together. That it is amazing how much my heart and body can melt when those things happen, you know, with someone else doing them. I mean, my partner doesn't live in my house. So um, it's, it's interesting. Like one morning, I remember I came down to the kitchen and I had done this myself, but I, I you know, I had cleaned the sink the night before. So there was no dishes. And I came downstairs and I left him this message. And I was like, you know, I just realized like, if you ever want to help me relax, like take the dishes and do whatever is in the sink, because I cannot believe how relaxed and excited I feel myself this morning, even though I did it myself. Right. Oh, wow. It's like, there's, there's this way that, I wouldn't think that men would understand that, that it goes to our hearts when we're helped with some of these tasks that have traditionally fallen on us. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing to see, you know, that that was happening for you too. I love that. And I love that you figured out what felt good and what you need and then you asked for it. Right. So. I mean, that is part of it too. And I think yes. sometimes women or whoever's been betrayed can still be in that place of blaming, shaming, attacking. And, you know, I commend you so much for being willing to say, Ooh, okay, I'm going to turn this into feelings and I statements, and I'm going to start to ask for what I need. And, you know, so for a man listening where that has happened or that's happening, you know, there's, there's some work to do or some help to get to be able to turn it around so that both people are willing to co-create or willing to start to try to trust again. Oh, amen to that. And it's interesting because when you describe that, I think I didn't feel like I had a voice for a lot of our marriage. Mm -hmm. And yet I would yell, I would uh -huh. call, I would bring up the past. You know, Kobe would say, you're like a Tommy gun when you come at me. It's just like you bring up everything all at once yes. because I wanted to be heard. Yes. And I didn't have boundaries. I didn't understand what I needed. And so that in itself, like for so long, I just said, these are your problems. You fix them. Like you need to rebuild trust with me. It's, right. a, it's, it's all on it, you. Yeah. But it was like, oh, I see my part. And we actually, if, even if you do get better and you say I'm sober and I'm, look what I'm doing, all these things. If I do nothing, we still won't have a good relationship because right. We, we wouldn't have learned how to communicate or have rules of engagement or, yep. you know, figure out all these other little things that were broken as well. Mm. Do you guys have rules of engagement? We do. Mm. Can you say <laughs> a little bit about that? That's exciting. <laughs> yeah, that was actually one of the beginning things too, because like I said, we were just very unskilled in our relationship. So um, little things, uh, I said, I'm a name caller. I was, um, I haven't done it for years. It feels really good. Awesome. Um, but that's one, like rule number one, no name calling. No name calling. Mm -hmm. Rule number two, stick to one topic. <laughs> <laughs> right. so, We're not bringing up everything from the past. Yes. Yeah. Um, and rule number three, if we need to take a break, we say we need to take a break, but we take 24, like up to 24 hours and then we check in. Uh huh. So that was- You another tell each other how long, like, okay, we're going to take a break for X amount of time or you co-create yes. that? Yeah. So instead of old me was- I don't want to talk about this and I'd leave the room and then we'd never talk about it again. Yep. I, we just have this ice for like a week. Um, we said we have to talk about it again, but we need time to sort through it. So sometimes it's 10 minutes. Sometimes it's 24 hours. Sometimes it's three days, but every 24 hours we're saying, I'm still Are processing. You ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So little things like that, that there's a bunch that you can do, but those work for us. Great. Any other rules of engagement? Um, yes. <laughs> um, I have a whole list of them if you really want to. Have I, no, I think it's a really <laughs> awesome for others to hear because, you know, it's not common for couples to make agreements or rules of engagement until something happens where, oh, shit, you know, <laughs> things are yes. not going well. But I'm a big proponent with couples of starting that process sooner rather than later. So for someone who hasn't had betrayal, I think it's great to be like, oh, how are we communicating with each other? How are we yes. engaging with each other? How are we supporting each other? But especially for those who've had betrayal and breaks in trust, 
this is so powerful. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes. And we were the wait till everything hits the fan, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but we did it. So it's okay. Um, Here's a a couple more. So um, tell truth at all costs. Mm -hmm. So even if it hurts me, I want to know the truth. Um, No passive aggressiveness. Um, Just listen if you're being asked to listen. So we do a lot of reflective listening or I'm just the listener and you're just the speaker Uh kind of thing. That works really well when you want to be heard or understand. Um, Okay. Focusing on self. So no finger pointing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like you were saying, using I statements, using the feeling will. Um, We are no hitting, threatening, or throwing things. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you take timeouts and and need to leave, it's sharing where you're going and when you'll be back. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, oh, talking directly to one another, not through other people. So that hop- would happen like through children, you know, sometimes parents uh, through children, like passive ag- aggressively say things like tell your yeah. mother, that, you know, yes. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so none of that. Um, and then agreeing that we can go to bed mad, which, you know, when we you got can married, or you cannot, we can go to bed mad. Okay. Um, because we were taught don't go to bed mad. Right. We'd, we'd have all these fights that four in the morning, four in the rain <laughs> when you're both exhausted and totally yes. not resourced. And yeah. So yeah. we, we don't bring up heavy topics after nine 30. Okay. And it's like, I'm just done for the day. You know, I've talked a lot or I've given a lot. And so, you know, I'm ready to talk about this or I want to talk about this hard thing. We schedule it. You yep. know, how about Thursday when the kids are in bed or whatever? Um, that works a lot better for us. That's so great. Far. That's great. Yeah, I always have couples start a conversation with like, would this be a good time to talk about this? Or if not, let's find a good time because, right, sometimes we can have a a topic of conversation and just, you know, like, well, it's a good time for me, so let's do it. And if the other person, it's not a good time, then it doesn't go well. Totally. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, The last thing that I would say um, that really helped, I kind of mentioned it in the rules of engagement, is just that rigorous honesty despite consequences, Um, which for someone who's betrayed is is hard because you know how painful it is to tell the truth. Right. And so just little things, you know, Kobe started showing up in little tiny moments of, oh my gosh, I forgot to tell you. I, I scheduled lunch with a friend. And, you know, this, or, Hey, we went to, we're going to lunch and it's going to have these two girls from work. And I just wanted you to know, and it's not a big deal. We're talking about work, whatever, things like that, where it's for somebody who's been betrayed, uh it could Uh be very triggering for me to find out later. Last minute or later. Yeah. Yes. And so just, you know what? It may not need, I may not need to know all the things. I don't need to know every thought and plan he has for his day, but I need to know the things that matter. And so it's like active honesty or rigorous honesty, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, and we have like, a, we talked about it today, um, transparency agreement, which is like, what does it mean for you uh-huh. for me to be honest? Hmm. Um, because it's different for everyone. You know? Oh, and, interesting. Like what that means, like honesty is, you know, for one person it's saying everything. For another yes. person it's and for someone who's been betrayed, saying, you know, well, no healthy sh- relationship, we should be like, and then I did this, and then I thought this. And <laughs> you know, that's just mothering or care. T- it's weird. Yes. But there is instances throughout your day that are worth sharing with your partner of just like, hey, this is me being totally open and totally honest, you know, so Kobe and I do little things like, Hey, if he's going to text one of our mutual friends, girlfriends, or a neighbor, that's a girl, he just includes me. So it's Uh not weird. He doesn't want to put his himself in a situation where it looks like he's trying to engage. Hide something or engage. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for being willing to share, you know, what, what worked for you and, what helped you feel safe? There's, there's so much of a woman's mind and heart that our, you know, our attention is on safety. And I can hear in a lot of the things that you two did, how they created safety for you. And it's not like Kobe wa- needed to you know, give up himself. He actually needed to take better care of himself yes. so that he could come and show up for you and the kids. 
Absolutely. Yes. That discovery of self, it happened to us both. And yep. it was really beautiful to see him, you know, take that on as well. So, mm, so awesome. Yeah. Is there any last thing you want to leave men with on this topic? Um, just if, if you're feeling that, you know, I want to, to heal this, I, you know, maybe your partner is not interested in doing any work. Um, just the idea of, you know, at least start um, with or without your partner. Um, there are so many different resources out there to, to move forward through this and so that it isn't an ongoing issue. Um, I definitely, I heard the once a cheater, always a cheater. And I think that can be true if you do nothing. Uh -huh. um, but if you really choose to shift and make some daily changes, it's not a bad thing. I mean, if you're here, you already have a growth mindset and that's yep. all recovery is. Mm. It's just being willing to be uncomfortable and grow. Awesome. Awesome. So, Thank you so um, much. Yeah, you bet. I did want to mention just our podcasting group. Please. We do have a, uh, we have a men's uh, addiction course coming out soon, just releasing in about two months, but we do have a couple's course that is healing from um, the shattered trust to thriving intimacy. And it just walks you through the different steps and layers of what recovery can look like for both parties. And we've mm -hmm. had people do it separately. We've had people do it together. And then we have people do it three or four times. <laughs> so awesome. um, that's available over on our website. And it's just beyond-enough.com. Just beyond-enough.com. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. And definitely go check out The Betrayed, The Addicted, and The Expert. We've had a couple of great episodes together and you've had other you know, really powerful guests and experts. So go check out their podcast as well. And thanks so much for being here today. Thank you. I'm so glad you joined us for today's episode of Man Alive. I hope you enjoyed our conversation and it gave you something to consider and explore in your life. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe and write a quick review that helps men like you find us. And again, head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text the word ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 to get a sense of how you can become a better lover and leader. You'll start to see how you can be both more respected and desired in your unique and genuine way. If you don't feel as confident or as excited about life or love as you'd like to be, this quiz is a really great starting point and will guide you toward a more passionate love life and a more inspiring and successful career. So again, text ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 or head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz. Join us each week for a new episode of Man Alive.